All right, we got an assignment. We have a graded discussion board. We have a place where students can ask questions. Let's round this out by adding in a quiz. So I'll go to the Canvas course menu, click on quizzes, and click on plus quiz. And we'll call this uh, week 10 memory. Letting students know about when this quiz takes place. And we'll include some directions. So I'll just copy paste them in here. I have, this quiz has no time limit other than it needs to be completed by the due date. There are 30 questions, each worth one point. The quiz may only be taken once. To start the quiz, enter the access code 10. So it's up to you whether you wanna make a quiz timed or untimed. If it's timed, that implies that it's more upon what does a student have in his or her brain. Uh, if it's untimed, well, then the student can take as long as he or she wants to go through the materials and maybe simply just have the textbook open on the lap going through the chapter, right? And so often we think of that as the problem. Uh, however, if it's untimed, one of the benefits is that if a DSPS student needs 150% or 200% time, you're not having to go back and make individual changes for that particular student. Also, let's change the mindset from a quiz being a way to test what the student has gotten in his or her memory and instead change it into a facilitated study guide. That is, let's acknowledge, if we're doing this untimed, that really we're prompting the student to go find information for us and we're rewarding them with a point or whatever point value it is each time they get us correct information. So we have here this quiz, that's why I put here 30 questions. I mean, if we're gonna make them uh, approach this as a study method, let, let's have them study lots of different things. Of course, there's a trade-off, so we only have so much time in our lives to create these quizzes, so you have to find that, that balance there. So I'm gonna head over to where it says questions, and I'm gonna add a question, new question here. And you can see there's lots of different question types, multiple choice and true false. If you're teaching math and numerical and formula answer pretty good, I'm just gonna stick with multiple choice for now. And I'm gonna to go to my uh, Word document where I happen to have uh, some questions here and you may have a set of questions from your publisher and if that's the case rather than hand typing them in you can go to the tech help and go to where it says um, canvas support and there's a phone number and you can call them and say hey I have a publisher's you know file of all these quiz questions how do I get them in my course so I don't have to hand type them in right but I'm not going to be doing too much of this hand typing so I'm going to go ahead and just copy and paste in uh, at least one of these questions. And there we go, we've got our question and answers. I'm gonna click on the correct answer. So click on this arrow here, there we go, correct answer. And now I'm done with my basic quiz question. If I want, I can include feedback if they get a correct answer, like good job. And I can also provide uh, feedback if it's an incorrect answer. For example, uh, a link to further information if I wanted to. Uh, or just-in-time uh, instruction of some type. But for now, I'm just gonna say update question. So now I have a quiz with just one question. That question's worth one point, and I will save and publish. Okay, so I have a quiz created. Let's go in and set up the parameters for this quiz. So it's uh, a graded quiz, good. Uh, I'm gonna shuffle the answers. Uh, just so the students won't be able to say, hey, for question one, pick B. You know, I, at least a little change up there. No time limit. I, I could, but I'm not going to have that. Allow multiple attempts. I'm going to make this one attempt only. But if this was like a, a, a case where I had like more questions than would actually appear on the quiz, like I had a quiz pool of 100 questions and 30 of them appeared, then I might be worth my while to say multiple attempts. And there's ways to do that, but we're not going to address that right now. Let's see, let students see their quiz responses, okay, but only once after each attempt. And I'm not gonna show them the correct answers because again, I don't want them to get on the phone or take a picture with their um, phone and, and, you know, and send it with their friends. At least let's make this a little bit more difficult to get out uh, information and help people to cheat. Let, let's keep it a little bit more tight. Okay, show one question at a time, sure. And uh, let's see, require an access code, yes. And, 
the access code is just going to be 10. And what that means is if a student clicks on this quiz, instead of it sounding like, boom, you're in the quiz, uh, they'll have to type in the access code so they don't accidentally start the quiz. That's not as relevant here where it's an untimed quiz, uh, but if it was a timed quiz, and once they start it, the, the clock is ticking, uh, it's kind of nice to put as a kind of a, a, a gatekeeper this access code so they don't inadvertently start the quiz they didn't mean to. Okay, and a due date. Uh, we'll make it due on Saturday. All right, so good. So now we have our, our parameters uh, set for the quiz. Let's go back and take a look at that quiz question. So I mentioned the idea that instead of this quiz being a way to test what people know, it's really a sneaky way to get them to study. I know that they probably have the book in front of them. And in fact, I'm gonna make it even easier for them to study. I want them to study. So I'm gonna to go to YouTube here and you know, this question deals with sensory uh, memory. So I'll do a search on uh, sensory memory psychology. And let's see, find something that's kind of short. Um, this looks really short, but I, I'll go with this for now. Hi, and welcome back to this video course. Cool. And of course, I would preview the whole video and just randomly grab something. But for you know, sake of example, let's say I've looked and I like this one. I'll go ahead and click where it says share and I'll grab the URL. And I'll come back to my quiz and I'll go above the question and I'll go here where it says insert media and the source I'll paste in the URL and okay ooh look at that all right and then I'm gonna update the question you have to remember to update the question then you save now let's go ahead and preview all right so this is what the question will look like we've got a Questionnaire sensory memory retains information and some questions. They can watch the video. Hi, and welcome back. So if they don't even have the textbook, they're they're good to go. And then they can pick what they think is the correct answer. And then when uh, they're done, they can click submit. To add additional questions, you just go back to edit. You go over to questions, and from the questions, we would go ahead and click on new question. And that's the most basic way to keep adding questions. There's, again, techniques where you can use question pools. And for that, uh, there's other resources you can take a look at that will help you with.